Scotty reporting for Israel KX27. This just in, suicide bomber attacks bus with military soldiers. According to officials, the explosion happened at 11.47 a.m. when a suicide bomber tried to attack a bus, number 9, that had military soldiers on it. The suicide bomber is suspected to be a 16-year-old boy named Sameh Leham, who may have been responsible for this disaster. Now, I had a chance to talk with some eyewitnesses about the disaster that occurred. Go ahead. My name is Kuladria Smith, and I was in the car, and that's when I saw the entire explosion. It scarred me for life. My name is Latoya, and I was on my favorite walk, and I mean, I just saw this bus coming full of cute soldiers, and I was so happy when they came to save us, but all of a sudden, another bus came out of nowhere and hit it. Bodies were flying everywhere, I mean, blood and guts, I mean, all under the rainbow. It was, I, 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 I had nightmares for weeks. Yeah. I'm Sydney Smith and I was in the bus when it exploded. I was just released from the hospital for head trauma and I just remember in the bus, the explosion, there were like flames everywhere and I just started to black out but I could hear the children. They were all crying but I can't do anything to help them. I'm David and I was like a few feet behind the school bus and I saw a yellow van crash into it. It exploded and then I, like, I could feel the heat. It's just really like fire everywhere. Really now I'm told victims of the bus are being killed at Hadrim Hospital and being treated for their injuries. And here's some background information on Panina Cass, which is the author of my book Real Time. Reporting from you live, here is the character information. Sarah is a very picky girl. She is stubborn but very down to earth. Her boyfriend Dan is the only one who truly knows that she is picky, stubborn, and very opinionated. I pulled a quote from the book explaining this. Dan says to his friend, I keep telling you, Vera is a very picky girl from Odessa. Although I love her more than life because she is my Vera and will always be my Vera. Page 45. Vera meets a girl named Lydia who becomes her best friend. And it, she quotes in the book, Vera tells her a secret that sh no one else knows. Vera says, Lydia, I am perhaps the most vain person you will ever meet, and no one else knows it. Page 91. See, although Vera outside is a nice person to everyone else, she does not see how nice she is inside. Everyone thinks she's the most giving person. She loves photography. She loves mapping things out. She likes charting. But no one else can see it, and she feels very vain about it. So like I said earlier, Vera is a part of a group called the Kaboots. And when she's at the Kaboots, she meets a guy named Barch. Well, Barach. B-A-R-U-C-H. Anyways, in the book, he's giving his opinion on Vera, and it says, quote, Vera is the nicest person I know. She loves photography, enjoys helping others, loves listening to music, and still she does not even know how great she is. Page 21. This just goes into more detail about explaining that Vera doesn't understand. She doesn't know how great and nice person she is. She's nice to everyone, but she just doesn't feel that way. And this just helps explain more of it because she doesn't understand and she's so giving. So that's really important to realize. Up next, we have the adult and teen relationship that occurred in the book. Enjoy! So in the book, there's a guy named Barge who works at the Kibbutz as a gardener. Now Vera's going to the airport to pick up Thomas, who's coming to the Kibbutz. After the bus explodes, they both get put in the hospital. Vera is on one floor being treated, but Thomas' injury is, his is more serious, so he's in a coma. 
but his mom is in Berlin, so if she isn't there, they're trying to contact her. In the meantime, however, Barch decides to watch over Thomas because he has no one there, and they haven't met face to face, so they don't really know each other. I mean, Barch knows who Thomas is, but Thomas doesn't know who Barch is because he's in a coma. And this just explains Barch is telling the nurse he wants to watch out for Thomas, he wants to look after him for a while. So here's the quote, quote When I sit down, I tell the nurse, I will stay with Thomas. He is alone, you know. Page 111. Barch is just telling the nurse that since Thomas doesn't have anyone, he's going to watch over for him. So that's really important. It's a big part of the adult teen relationship. Now as the days pass, we realize that Thomas is making improvements, but very small amounts of improvements, but Barch is still there watching after him. And he just tells a little bit about how he's getting used to Thomas and stuff. It says, quote, This morning in the hospital, I'm a little more used to his stillness. I no longer expect the boy lying on the bed to be the boy who sent us his photo. I am starting to care for the boy, even though I do not truly know him yet. Page 120. This is just going more into detail about how he really does care. He's starting to feel more for the boy. He's starting to care about him. Keep in mind, though, they don't really truly know each other. So like I said earlier, Botch is starting to care for Thomas a lot. And so he tells the nurse, he asks, quote, I call the nurse and ask, has Thomas made any improvements today? Yes, the nurse says, much progress, but very slow progress, page 145. This just shows that he's interested in his improvements and he really does genuinely care about Thomas. See, Thomas can feel his presence. He can feel Botch in the room, but he doesn't know who he is. Botch knows who Thomas is. He's expecting him. He just doesn't truly know him because now that Thomas is in a coma, he hasn't got a time with Bond to bond with Thomas or anything like that. So that's just really important to realize in this chapter. So now on to setting. So Vera explains how she feels when she first comes to Israel. She says, when I arrive, I remember thinking that it was a rundown place and how torn up it was. The homes were the size of my old garage. The windows were boarded with wood and the house, the house walls were already crumbling. Page 72. When she says this, we can understand that the homes in Israel and the setting is just very poor, very run down, if you will. It's, it's not up to date. It's, it's, it's not modern at all. It's very old. They don't have a lot of money there. It's very much in poverty. So we understand this when she says this. It just helps us to realize what it's like. So when Vera and Thomas are on their way in the bus before the explosion on their way from the airport, Vera looks out the window and she's seeing things that are going past and she says, quote, I look out the window and see a gravel road and many women and children walking on the side of the road with tattered clothing, page 69. When she says this, we understand that there's not a lot of cars. There's a lot of traveling by foot, and their clothes are tattered, she says. So when she says this, we understand that it is really poor here, and they don't have money for clothes or cars, and they have to walk. And it's just really important to realize this because it is a big part so of it. So my book. last quote is about one of the doctors in the book who doesn't really have a name, he's just kind of there. But it does say something very important about the setting. He says, I drive up to the hospital when things are blocked off. They make us wait in line for four hours to get through the checkout. Things are very disorganized. And I don't know how long it's going to take until I get past. Page 114. This is important because it's not, well, it's kind of like the setting. It's just not about the things around you, it's more about the setting of the government and the setting. So it's also setting, it's just not necessarily the nature around it. It's the importance of the crazy commotion, people there, they're just not organized and the whole society is not very organized. He's saying that it took him 
over three hours to get past a security checkpoint and they weren't being very thorough with their investigations and it was just crazy and it was not well put together. It's very poverty, very much poverty there. So that's really important. So my sources for this video are my book, Real Time by Panini Cast, Google and Bimmy. We will be keeping you posted on the accident in hand. I'm Scotty for K Israel KX29, signing off.